streaming the mm. session live on YouTube. Mm. Uh, Channel I have to uh, ask Dr. Sunil Palsa okay. to all the participants of today's webinar. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, it's a great pleasure for us to have Dr. Isen Joshi among us as an expert for the uh, topic, uh, who is a famous scientist in India. Not only in India, he has a also international field. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, mm -hmm. we are really very fortunate to have him among us. Dr. Isen Joshi did his MSc tech in electronics and radio engineering from Allahabad University and PhD from CCS University Media. He had been in CSIR series for about half century as regular scientist, EM scientist, and national coordinator. He had coordinated the activities of microwave tubes area in CSIR series Pilani for 16 years as chief scientist. After his superannuation, he had coordinated a major multi-institutional project sponsored by DST Nibeli as its national coordinator for design and development of a very high power device known as Dirotron. He had also been advisor of CSR network program on high power micro tubes for about 10 years. He has also co coordinated four international collaborative projects with University of Lancaster, UK, University of Tübingen, Germany, University of Technical Physics, Germany, and Seoul National University, South Korea. Dr. Joshi is a member of various scientific bodies related to research and development in the area of microtubes. Around 16 R&D projects for space, atomic energy, and defense have been completed under his guidance. Dr. Joshi's major research contributions span over a wide variety of topics in electronics and microengineering, microtubes, and ultra-high vacuum technologies. Dr. Joshi has supervised the MTech and BTech BE dissertations of 60 students and has published more than 125 research papers. He has also been received Sir Jesse Bose Best Paper Award from IET. He is a member of various societies like IE, IEEE, IETE, IBS, ESSI, IPA, BEDA, and IFT. He has also been the chairman and member of various advisory and review committees of different organizations like DRDO, DAE, ISRO, CSIR, IIT BHU, IIT Rookie, and BEITY. He had also been the co chairman of four group of state mm -hmm. SMT mm -hmm. demonstrations. He was also in the board of governors. Mm -hmm. Of Graphic Era University, Dehradun, for two terms after his super animation. During the first during the past 14 years, he has been closely associated with the activities of National Council of Science Museum, NCSM, Government of India in various capacities, that is, member, governing body, chairman of executive committees of National Science Center, New Delhi, chairman of selection and assessment committees of its scientific and technical staff. Recently, he is the chairman of the Research Advisory Board of NCSA. Now, may I request Dr. Joshi sir to share his knowledge with us. Sir, please. Thank you, Professor Paul. First of all, I'd like to thank you for giving a very large, exhaustive introduction of myself. For not to but of course, you have given. Thanks a lot to you. And thanks to the organize, all the organizers for giving me the opportunity to be here to share my knowledge, whatsoever I have, with the youngsters particularly. So the topic I have chosen is the R&D opportunity in the country, and particularly referring to the activities of microwave tubes at CSIR City Pilani. I have chosen this subject for the youngsters particularly what we are today is due to the what's a lot of in, inventions made by a lot of our scientists around the globe. And we are having the fruits of those inventions. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
that activity is continuing. If you think, Maybe. if I see my childhood, when I was, say, in 50s or so, what we have? We have, we have nothing. We have, uh, we used to have a, a Murphy radio in our house. That too, those who are, uh, say, better off, they used to have afford a simple radio in their household. And a Sydney fan, if I remember, the, if you can recall that black fan, which was in our, when I was young. So that was the thing. And see where we are today. The thing what, I mean, the things have simply changed in last two decades, or if you can say five decades or so, and things are rapidly changing. And that is all due to the scientific inventions which were made earlier. And a lot of efforts is being continued today also. And due to that, we are, today we are talking of so many, uh, in the communication particularly, we are talking of so many Gs. 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, 6G also we are saying. So that is all due to the changes in technology. So there is exponential growth. So I would like to share what uh, the timeline, how the things have changed in around say 200 years or so. And what, what are the opportunities we have for the youngsters as on today? When, as I, if I talk of my child, when I just completed my MTech in 1967 from University of Allahabad. That time also, uh, limited opportunities were there for carrying out R&D. Limited institutions were there, which have grown continuously. And there are a lot of opportunities which have been provided by various organizations, support organizations within the country. So I'd like to share them. And then particularly, I'd like to say, uh, share with you uh, what Siri Pilani has been because that is the young yet oldest organizations in the area of microtubes in our country. So that uh, and I once again thank you for giving me an opportunity. Now I'll uh, switch my uh, presentation and I'll, I'll go through that. Uh, just a minute. Professor, Bas Professor Mahishuri, I see you. Good evening. And to everyone who is here. Is the screen visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, then I'll start. Uh, uh, how much time is allotted to me? I'll um, adhere to that. It is now 3.15. .15 yes, sir. Or... You can continue up to 4.15. Uh, no problem. Okay. Okay. Th thank you very much. So if you have any issue, I can cut short my presentation also. So anyhow, thank you very much. So I'm talking the title is R&D opportunities in the country. We have is the role of CSR series micro tubes. So uh, this is what I would like to cover. And uh, this presentation is with you, all, all it is shared with you, everyone. So uh, I may uh, run some time fast because some something I have not been able to cover fully. So I would like to be excused for that, but I'll, I'll try to cover to the extent it is possible. But anyhow, this presentation is with you. My email ID is with you. And uh, anytime you can inquire with me, you have your, through your mail or something like that, or even phone number, I'll be there. Whatsoever knowledge I will have, I'll be happy to share with you. Uh, this is the great organizations where I have been for about half a century, 49 years precisely. I call it half a century. So this institute was established uh, by our first Prime Minister, late Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The, his foundation stone was laid by him in 1953. And the R&D started sometime around 57 or 58 or something like that. So the, 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 the very best thing of CD is that we have the uh, division which takes care of the microwave devices, a division which takes care of semiconductor devices, and also a system. So if you can 
think of a making a big system then we have all the facilities are there we have a variety of uh, facilities are there in the systems area and then these two devices area micro tubes as well as semiconductor devices so that's a brief introduction about siri uh, now coming to the uh, just uh, need not to uh, go into details of that but the hope about the communication the first uh, i think the our postal services that type of uh, i can say the first communication started around uh, something around 175 or 180 years back it was started by britishers in our country also and the very first type communication we have the morse code uh, the you youngsters may not be aware of that morse code but the old generation is very much uh, uh, be acquainted with the morse code and uh, particularly the telegram which was used for telegram and uh, sometime in night hours when this uh, postman used to come so you are sometime you become scared of what type of something is coming it was very uh, remotely used actually so this morse code was developed in 1835 and then we have the what you see the television today it came around 1923 and uh, then we come to the next see uh, we have the computer programming language fortran which was established in 1954 and then optical fiber which is very prominent now it came around 1956 and uh, then the, now with the talk of communication this email what are very now we are dependent on that of course these days we are also uh, we are much more ahead we go to whatsapp only whatsapp we communicate through whatsapp or what's a new uh, telegram or one more as as started so that's the everyone even in the official communication sometimes used to use the whatsapp only even email is also or sms i mean they are hardly they are being used but email of course it was it was around say 50 years back this email was started and then we have uh, this you see today what we are talking of this uh, communication era when we are talking of so many g's the very first the funji technology which was analog one which was around 1981 and then uh, we have this uh, 3d technology and uh, 4g technology 5g technology iot ai all these things are now nice. now if you see that uh, these days we are talking of facebook we are talking of twitter we are taking of these things they only started around 2004 the facebook started around 2004 so then we have the youtube twitter iphone whatsapp instagram all these things so the things are rapidly changing this 4g 5g and whatsoever be at present at present of course we are in country or in 4g only but uh, they they are the countries who have also gone to 5g i am also audible let me is it i am audible clearly yes sir okay thank you very much so uh, this is what we we were and what we are see you see you all must be the youngsters must be realizing that how the things are, have been changing and this basically goes to the advancement in technologies that's the main thing and the inventions have been made earlier but the, those uh, uh, those inventions are being used the fruit we are take we are getting the fruits what we are uh, 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 right long back about 200 250 years or 300 years back and we are taking advantage of that so that as on today uh, we are we call the things have changed rapidly and still you don't know what will happen in next 10 years or so we are not able to visualize because uh, 50 years back we never utilized where these things will come even 30 years back so thus we cannot say how how the technology will take us to where in one one more another one decade or so so uh, the thing is there are uh, due to these advancement what we have been taking inventions or technology opportunities abundance of technology that's all i like to share with the youngsters particularly uh, when we were searching for the job in those uh, time even the parents used to say that beta engineering kar lo beta medical mein chale jao there are that only two options what used to have but if you take today there are enormous uh, subjects which have come 
and you can choose them and you can the only thing is uh, whatsoever subject you choose you have to try to do your best you have to excel in that particular field whatsoever you choose there are unlimited fields these days don't see we are talking of engineering or medicine only there are now abundant abundant technology just are available only thing is you have to focus and you have to excel your best and opportunities are abundance you have to catch them but the only thing is you youngsters you have to try to do your best whatsoever field you choose now the coming to the opportunities what we have in the country as on today we are uh, uh, plenty of csr labs there are about uh, 37 csr labs across the our country and uh, the advan the advantage of csr is csr has been in different various different disciplines csr presence is there department of atomic energy i'll just go into detail about them then isro labs drdo labs DIT labs, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai, all IITs, all NITs, central universities, some of the state government universities, and some of the private universities and colleges, they have also have the facility of uh, research and development in their curriculum. Not all, but some are there, they are doing very good. You may be knowing them. There are some of the private colleges or universities. They have been doing. They are very doing particular field. But the other, what's why I discussed earlier, these are the organizations who take care of the research and development, particularly in the area of electronics. Uh, these are the not good in detail, but this is about the CSAR. In this same disciplines, you see their presence, different labs. Uh, in addition to that about uh, 10 years back or even more than that uh see academy of scientific and in innovative research was established by csir and uh, this program runs across all labs of csir where they provide their three streams as on today also they provide mtech two years mtech they also have uh, integrated mtech phd program and third is pure phd so the intake can be only for MTech, integrated MTech and PhD, and and only for PhD. So that this uh, uh, academy and uh, earlier in this academy, in this academy, through some batches, they were uh, integrated in the system of these uh, laboratories at scientist C level. And but as on today now. Uh, they have to compete. What's where post are advertised? They are. They have also compete, but they have the advantage of being in CSAR, doing MTech from CSAR. So they know about a lot of things in the beginning itself. So they can compete in a better way to the other students. So the facilities is there. Uh, is still on today. The they are, the programs have changed, but still the, broadly these are the three disciplines where csr is there they are the different i'll not go these are very clumsy so uh, i will not go to the isro different uh, labs of isro isro you are all aware that isro has uh, uh, various programs particularly for satellites our uh, whatsoever tv we watch it is through it is the courtesy of isro only various programs they have various satellite they are launched and uh, they also have uh, in addition to the satellite and uh, with different type of inset program they also have remote sensing they also take care of the remote sensing uh to take care of different uh where where, where the in our, our universe what's what is going on that's a remote sensing uh, is their program so they are they are di different uh laboratories are different centers are there and the more prominent are uh you may be knowing that is so in bangalore i uh, sec in ahmedabad and vssc in trivindam and there are a lot of more, but there are various ones where uh, broadly uh, these satellites are made and launched. So there are different pro their programs. Uh, you all aware with the Chandrayaan two, which was very recently um, launched in 19, 2019, and before that, the Mars mission, which where the I mean where uh, the one 
which uh, uh, could do that successfully in 2014. And these again, uh, this uh, satellite navigation and Kagan programs, they are also running with them. So they have a variety of programs. And uh, uh, DRDU is another defense research and development organizations. They have number of labs. And uh, what, you, what you see the red dots, if you, if you, I, I don't, these dots are not visible. Uh, yes, red dots are there. Those red dots are basically for the, we are, we are dealing with electronics. And here we see the uh, LRD and uh, in um, Bangalore, MTRDC, that is Microwave Tube Research and Development Center, Bangalore. They are very prominent in the area of microwave tubes. I'll go, I'll just uh, mention about them in detail. Yes, Something problem or I'm clear? Yes, sir, please continue. Please okay. Uh, so then uh, uh, this, uh, you, you know about the uh, uh, Research Center Imarat, you know, also know about LRD, TLRL, DRDL, all these laboratories, you have the, the uh, missile programs, they are very prominent at them. Uh, then the Atomic Energy Commission, that is the Department of Atomic Energy under that, we have Atomic Energy Commission, and they have a number of R&D centers and uh, you all know about BRC. BRC is very common. And uh, then on the extreme uh, extreme left hand, you see the R&D centers. That is the BRC, then Raja Ramana Center, which is RRC at Indore, Variable Energy Cyclotron Center at Kolkata, Atomic Minerals and Directorate for Exploratory Research, Hyderabad and Bangalore, and Global Center for Nuclear Energy Partnership in Haryana. And then on the on the lower side, you see the Homi Baba National Institute, Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences, National Board of Higher Mathematics. In addition to that, there are some public undertaking, industrial organizations, service organizations, and aided organizations. And in the aided organizations, you all, all know, is the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research is there, and the Tata Memorial Center, Mumbai, and Sa Institute of Nuclear Physics, Kolkata, and all the. So there are a number of organizations, and this is the broad spectrum of the atomic energy. And uh, you all may be at least definitely knowing about the BRC. BRC, uh, long back, used to have a, uh, they had to admit for their programs, as now CSIR is doing after so many decades, she had started uh, this MTEC program. So they also had this uh, uh, PG program, and uh, they used to provide uh, whosoever is selected used to get uh, you get a, almost a regular salary of a scientist and after completing two years used to be absorbed they used to be absorbed in the system dr joshi may i just interrupt can you make yes, the projection mode please i am doing that yeah yes thank There's you some 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 default so uh, now, as on today, that was the only uh, trading center where uh, this, uh, after doing your uh, B or MTech, used to used to be interviewed by that uh, board, and then you are selected, and they are absorbed as a regular scientist position or scientific officer, whatever it is. That was the only program which was running about say maybe about uh, 60, 60, 60 years back. What the, it was running since then. But as on today, they have a number of programs at different institutions, different organizations of, B, B of uh, DAE, uh, that is known as HBNI, Homi Baba National Institute. Under that, there are a number of programs are there. And they are running at different centers, not only a BRC, but at other places also these programs are running. Now coming to the uh, support for research and development in the country, I mentioned earlier, but uh, I'll not go into details of them. Few of them I'll be listing. CSAR, that is the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, where I had been for about privilege of having been there for about half a century. So they support, they have uh, a group which is known as Human Resource Development Group. They support research through this human research and development group. For that, uh, the, the, 
Uh, it has objective of promoting research in scientific and technical, including agriculture, engineering, and medicines. So different types of disciplines are supported by them. And they also conduct uh, this, uh, you may be knowing that this uh, contest for test for GRF, SRF, and RA is by centrally they are organized by CSIR. And uh, they also provide grant to previous uh, different universities, PG institutions, etc., and uh, public and private sector. It means you, uh, if you have a good proposal, it's not an individual, the, the particular organization can submit a proposal to HRDG group and uh, that project is sanctioned they are actually the if it has some link with any particular organization but any particular laboratory of csir suppose i am in siri and if you submit if anybody submits a project which is relevant to the activities of siri it gets a priority over the other project which do not have such support or sub uh, sponsorship i'll say so, but anyhow, they also, to some extent, they also get support. But in the present era, where all uh, grants due to this COVID in one year, last one year or so, uh, the you know that government fundings have been direct di diverted to the uh, other areas where the requirement is there due to this COVID. And uh, that's why the grant also, uh, this particular era, the grants have been, they are limited at present. But of course, whenever this uh, COVID goes, it is going, whatever we feel now. So we again, we have to be positive. Uh, things will definitely improve. And uh, the, the, the grant from CSIR and other organizations will also uh, be enhanced in a later quarter. And there's one another program, which is for youth. If you are passing your uh, 10th class, it has a program for young students interested in pursuing science in future. This program is known as CSI program on youth for leadership in CPYLS. So in decades now, uh, every organization, uh, they have uh, whatsoever, uh, suppose in Pilani, I gave you the Pilani, so whatsoever uh, schools and colleges are there in Rajasthan, they can participate in this program. So these meritorious students, they are selected. Not all, but few of them are selected from each or free from each school or college. And they are given a one week training, practical as well as theoretical training in, in the particular lab of CSIR. So this program has been running for decades together. And this is quite successful. And we try to teach them the activities, whatsoever is going on, and what would be the future, their future, uh, where they can pursue their science career particularly. The Defense Research and Development Organizations, DRDO has also, uh, Dr. Lajit may correct me, but probably 45 or even more than, uh, more uh, 54, if I'm correct. Dr. Lajit, can you correct me? There are about 54 laboratories, R&D laboratories across uh, the country. You're right. Uh, recently, a few have been closed down, so the number is uh, around. Yeah, that is different. That is a different thing. So I'm just a, a rough estimate I'm giving you. So they, yeah. they are also working in different disciplines. And they also support uh, projects, not only within DRDO, but outside DRDO also. There is a, there is a extra mural research and intellectual property rights division, ER and IPR. They support R&D projects. You have to prepare a project and uh, submit to them. And again, same thing what was in CSIR. If your project has uh, the requirement of some of the laboratories of DRDO, naturally, uh, they get a priority among projects which are directly supported. But ER and IPR is a greater funding agency. They have been supporting uh, projects. Not only they support the project, they also support the various, uh, if you are organizing some conferences, et cetera, they also support uh, for under, uh, undergoing those programs. The support, they also did. So uh, what I want to see, I mean, DRDO is a, is a very vast uh, organization. You also know, you all know about DRDO. All the requirement of uh, defense is taking, taken care by them. And whatsoever you see now, is the the credit goes to DRDO, different levels of DRDO, where we are today, 
in different disciplines, particularly for the uh, our uh, defense forces, all uh, military, navy, or air force. So that all is being that all research and development and that pirate production is being done by DRDO. Uh, Department of Electronics and Information. If you permit me to add. Yes. Definitely, and please. DRDO has other channels of funding also. Mm -hmm. And one of them is that each lab can uh, give a small project of right. 10 lab. Right, right, right. So that I, sorry. Lab. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. That I, I, I remember. Contact and, uh, for acquisition yes, of yes, yes. And thank you for that. And we I also remember that we also taken advantage of that. Two yeah. projects, such projects have been taken, it, uh, given by MTRDC to Siri for such small projects for doing particular job. Thank you, Dr. Lit Kumar. In, in addition, there is one more something bigger, uh, which is that uh, DRDO has also set up three research boards. Yes. One of them is called the Naval Research Board, mm. another is Aeronautic Research Board, mm. and the third is Life Sciences Research Board. Mm. So these research boards have their own funding, which totals to about 100 crores over the five year plan or so. Mm. So that is another thing if you are project falls in one of those domains right. and, and they have some priority areas. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Thank you for giving this uh, information to this uh, to me also. So this uh, DR, D, DEIT by Department of Electronics and Information Technology have different uh, centers uh, at different places. Uh, Samir is one of them, which is, uh, uh, which is close to us because they deal in the microtubes. Uh, so not only microtube, but they are tube technology, they are, they are there. But they also uh, support R&D projects, uh, development of electronic information technology. But the only thing is they have uh, a rider that whatsoever project you uh, submit, it should have a partnership from industry. Either it is a, a direct uh, sponsorship or uh, they uh, provide the facilities and uh, for carrying out research, etc. So it means they have their partnership is required. So if their partnership is there, if the such partnership is there with any private organization, then such R&D project get priority in the IT. And uh, they should have a, uh, even NGOs are also, if they are NGOs, they are registered NGOs, they also get, and we have a minimum experience of three years, they also get support from DRDO. And in addition to that, as uh, uh, DRDO and uh, CSIR, DIT, they, they also support uh, organizing the conferences, uh, either in national or international support that. And uh, particularly, they encourage, uh, I'd say, India beginning for uh, industrial participation in R&D projects. DAE, as uh, I have earlier mentioned, they also support, uh, they have number of uh, centers, as already, already informed. They also support. Uh, the projects to other organizations through their two centers. One is BRNS, Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences. Another is BRFST, Board of Research in Fusion Science and Technology. But now actually as on today, only one of them, they are merged together, only one of them is uh, supporting research R&D projects. And, uh, and they have a lot of programs for um, Academics, as you have already know through BRC, as in this uh, Homi Baba research in, in the national program. So, DST is another one, Department of Science and Technology. They take care of uh, not only electronics or physics, all disciplines of science, engineering, and technology. They support R&D projects. But such again, you have to submit the project which is uh, the, your project proposal is submitted to the experts. Then they meet, you invite you, you give your presentation. And if it is uh, OK, you are uh, given the sanction their projects. But again, they also, uh, again, again, they're uh, this small, they generally uh, support projects. Easily they are supported, which are of the tune of 10 to 15 or 20 lakhs or so. But if you have a major project, then naturally it requires more screening. But such projects are also sanctioned by them. And naturally, they also support as others. They support for holding national and international conferences. 
and uh, also support uh, this uh, international travel for conferences. As in CSIR, they have one another equity program, which is known as Innovation in Science Pursuit for Inspired Research. Inspired Research. That is known as Inspire Fellowship. And that Inspire Inspire Fellowship, uh, I don't know, but uh, as on uh, today, there are various categories of Inspire. But if I'm correct, uh, the, the highest one at present is around 94,000 per month. That Spire Fellowship is for two years, which can be extended for one year. But the only thing is that for being a inspire, getting Inspire Fellowship, you have to be very, very, you have to have a very excellent academic record. And through then only, you are able to get this Inspire Fellowship. But there are a number of fellowships are there, different categories. As the highest one I remember is about 96,000 or so. In addition to the, that, and in particularly this organization has a special programs for women scientists. If you through their, if you go through their website, you will get the details. All these what I am telling, all these details are there. But they are for particularly for women scientists. They are very uh, very lucrative programs are there for different R and D projects for participation in conferences, etc., etc. I have to see my watch also. Uh, I probably have a half an hour or so. Yes, okay. So now coming to the uh, that part one is over. We have discussed about the what sort of facilities, uh, R&D facilities are there in our country. And uh, what type of initiatives have been taken by our country after independence, after getting independence, independence. So this particularly in micro use area, there are a lot, there are uh, limited countries which are, say about 10, we are engaged in the area of micro use. We started uh, our activities, it was started, micro activity was started sometime, I don't, don't remember the correct year, but it was Institute of Radio Physics in Kolkata. They started programs in, uh, in the area of uh, this, uh, devices and when in the uh, early 50s when dr amarji singh the founder director of founder director i'll say of ccrcd he joined npl as a scientist then he started this activity of magnetrons at npl but later on after a very short time he was shifted to uh, pilani as uh, assistant director in charge and then a regular director and he was there for about uh, as a, uh, about for 24 years he retired in 1984 so after that after that when we started the magnetron activity in siri pilani after the around 1970 uh, 19 uh, 58, 53 are there, 58, this activity, which was uh, then known as vacuum tubes division, which was this activity was started with the magnetron. And later on, other devices also, but these are the, this is the oldest organization in the country, in the area of, oldest in the sense, they continued for so many years. Starting was by Institute of Radio Physics, then NPL, but but, uh, but it was continued for decades, and still this uh, these activities are continued at Siri Pilani. I'll come to them in a later stage. Then academic agencies, as I told you earlier, Institute of Radio Physics and Kolkata and Delhi University were also involved. TIFR, Data Institute of Fundamental Research, they did some activities, particularly in the area of Clystrons. They uh, did uh, develop a lot of technologies related to Clystrons. But of course, they can be used for others also, but particularly they wanted to start some work in the area of Clystrons. So they developed a lot of technologies and brought a lot of reports, which are also available to other organizations. But uh, 
they could not continue at TFR in the Clystone area. But then Samir was uh, Samir took the initiative, and these technologies were somebody were developed for Clystone were utilized by them for developing linear accelerators, which is still they are continuing at Samir Mumbai. Then academic agencies like IIT BHU, Varanasi, IIT Rudki, and IIT Patna are also involved in numerical analysis and CAD of these devices. Samir Mumbai and IPR Gandhinagar have also been involved in design and development of such and related devices. Center of Research and Microwave Tube from where we see Professor Basu here. Uh, he was a key player of this uh, that era, that time. So this uh, Center of Research in Microwave Tubes was established in 1979 with the support of then DOE, which is known as now DAITY, but that is the Portland Electronics that time. So it was then the center was established with the aim of uh, design and development of uh, particularly Clystone and Magnetron, and also technology of cathode. But these are the two devices where they wanted to concentrate. And they established uh, the facilities also. But uh, due to some limitations, they could not uh, continue for development of these devices. But they developed, a, they had a very strong base of uh, SCAD and numerical analysis of slow wave as well as fast wave devices, which is still continuing. And Professor Basu has done a lot, particularly in the uh, area of traveling wave tubes. The Microwave Tube Research and Development Center, which is MTRDC, which was established by DRDO in 1985. Initially, they started with the traveling wave tubes, but as on today, they have been working on different devices, including high power microwaves, miniature clystones, multi beam clystones, and uh, different types of cathodes. So now you can see that. Uh, yes, please. Anything? Can I continue? Okay. Yes, sir, please continue, sir. So they, they have a strong base now. Uh, they particularly take care of all the requirement of the defense in our country. And they have the advantage, which Siri Pilani has not, is they are in the Bharat Electronics Complex, Bharat Electronics uh, Limited in Bangalore, uh, where the very strong group on microwave tubes. So they have the advantage, the MTRDC had the advantage, at least at the initial stage also, as on today also, uh, they whatsoever they are uh, producing, they are being then they are being productionized by Bharat Electronics. So they, they have initial stages also, when this center was established, they were not having that much facilities that they have, they concentrated on the design of these devices, different devices, particularly TWTs, but Bharat Electronics was there. They used their, uh, their facilities and Bharat Electronics, as on now, they are productionizing what, what productionizing the devices, whatsoever are being developed by MTRDC. And then Central Electronics Limited, this was CEL, was established uh, in 1977. They started with the magnetron, uh, but uh, they developed some of the magnetrons, but they could not continue after a decade or so. so they, can, they were there for about one decade. And during that period, they developed magnetrons particularly. From Siri Nova also, on the, of their own, particularly the long load magnetron they made. Then this is center, which is PET and DPL, Pilani Electron Tubes and Devices Private Limited. This is a private organization in Sangrur, Punjab. And uh, it was established in 1994. Actually, production started in 1994. And this was established by our, our, our uh, uh, great scientist, Dr. G.S. Siddhu, who took voluntary retirement from Siri and established this organization with the support of a few others. But very good, very um, admiring thing about that in the tube technology, we always say either with Siri Pilani or Bharat or MTRDC, we always say if you get a yield of 50 to 60 percent, we are we see we are we are doing a great job. Means suppose we develop 
four tubes, out of them we got two, two works properly, then we say yes, this is quite good. But this is called yield. So in their case, though they are not making the microwave tubes, they are basically making triodes and tetrodes, but the technology is same. So we, they, I'm just uh, very happy to share with you there, there the yield is almost 100%. With the infrastructure, I mean, there is no comparison of infrastructure, what we had at Siri or what we have at MTRDC. Of course, now with time, they have also improved their uh, infrastructure. But about, say, 10, 15 years back, when we used to visit them, we used to compare what facility we have and what type of facility they have. And even these, those facilities, they are able to get about 100% yield. So it is a great achievement. And uh, they are, uh, Dr. Sidhu's both sons, earlier one was in US. Now he has also started, he has joined this company. Younger one was already with them. And now, very recently, about six months back, they also have now entered in the area of microwave tubes, started the uh, development of a uh, uh, CW magnetron, probably in S band. If I'm correct, and this is required by the uh, jewelers in Baroda. That is their requirement. Therefore, making the uh, meeting their requirement, they have they came to uh, this uh, organization. This uh, jewelers came to uh, this organization, and uh, they have started now. Probably uh, within within six months or a year at the most, they will be able to produce the very first CW magnetron. That will be the very first uh, uh, micro tube achievement of this. This will be of PET and DPL. So earlier they were not in this, they were only using triodes and tetrodes. Then very recently, this VEM technology, Hyderabad, and Panacea Medical Technology, Bangalore, have also recently entered in this area. And they have taken, uh, very recently, they have taken from Siri, and Panacea particularly, they have taken no from Siri Pilani. For, uh, for in the area of magnetrons and it's uh, so on magnetrons only. So this is uh, what uh, the organizations which are involved. Uh, now, just quickly, I'll glance I have another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, because I was in Siri, so I'll just, um, um, that day I'll pop, I, I'm a bit partial. I have not taken care of other organizations that much which I am going to talk about, Siri Pilani. I hope you will not mind. For the, uh, this is what the electromagnetic spectrum is, starting, starting from, from uh, uh, lower frequencies to extremely high frequencies. In between, you see microwaves also. So basically, microwaves, uh, when we say microwaves, it means uh, of the order when the frequency goes into gigahertz. Or you can say the, the wavelength comes to centimeter range. Below the centimeter range, when it is more than centimeter range, there are UHF, VHF, something like that. For the, this is for the students only. But when it comes to the uh, centimeter, in the range of centimeters, we call them microwaves. And then that this wavelength goes to millimeter, we call them millimeter waves. So up to 30 gigahertz, they are known as microwaves. They are in microwave range. Beyond 30 gigahertz up to 300 gigahertz, they are millimeter waves. And after that, they are sub-millimeter waves, terahertz, something like that, 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power 12. So that way the frequency. But mostly, the microwave range is where we are generally working, is in this range only. This is 1 to 30 gigahertz in the range. But of course, they are, there are these now devices are there, where we are talking of very high frequencies, of going to uh, sub terahertz or something like that. But mostly of the devices which are being developed in Siri Pilani or MTRDC or being produced by Bharat Electronics generally lie in this range, except few which go beyond this frequency also. Here you see the why, uh, I mean, the, regarding the communication, if they, what you see, the excess, you see the frequency or the wavelength on the y hands on the y axis is the attenuation of the atmosphere due to different gases or water vapor whatsoever it is. So you, you see the white portions. White portions are the one 
where the communication is possible. So in the beginning, on the extreme right hand side, extreme right hand side here, this particular one is the microwave region, 1 to 30. Here, the atmospheric atmosphere is very low. But here again, in this region, we have uh, water vapors there. Then again, there is a window around 45 gigahertz. Another window at uh, 95 gigahertz. So there are some windows where the communication is possible. Otherwise, in this shaded portions, you have heavy attenuation due to the gas molecules or water vapor water molecules are present. You cannot communicate. Your signal will die down. So there are limited uh, windows which are available for communication uh, when we talk of the microwave propagation. Then for the generation of microwaves, there are many routes. One is the semiconductor based technology, which are known as semiconductor solid state devices. And the second one is the vacuum based technologies, where we are known as microwave tubes, where I'll be discussing some detail about these devices. Then, third one is the combination of vacuum and semiconductor technologies. Here, MTRDC has taken a lead for making such devices, which are known as microwave power modules. They have been very successful in making different power modules, different frequency and power ranges. And then is the last one is the plasma based technologies. This is being tried. Not very successful yet, but one, two, three, we are, we are, we are here. We are already making those devices. The advantage of uh, vacuum based devices is because the uh, electrons are propagate in the vacuum. So there is no collision between um, gas molecules. So signal can propagate freely. Electron beam can propagate freely. So that's why you can go to very high powers. And semiconductor based technology, that's the disadvantage. You cannot go to very high power and also cannot be extended to very high frequencies. But as on today, now things have changed. When we are talking of uh, silicon and germanium, that was the era when we are talking of this is a limitation. But now the new uh, materials like indium phosphide, gallium arsenide, all these have come. They have enhanced the capability of these devices. So the there is a lot of competition now between semiconductor based devices and vacuum based devices, particularly at the lower frequency range. Uh, most of the devices, vacuum based devices or microwave tubes have been replaced by semiconductor based devices. But the future is still there very bright for these devices. If you are talking of very high power, we are talking of megawatt or gigawatt, then there is no option other than going to microwave tubes or talking of terahertz range of frequencies. Again, we have to use the vacuum based technology in a different category, which I'll tell you there later on. And uh, you have disadvantage and advantage of both. Semiconductor based devices, you have the ad some advantage, some disadvantage. Vacuum based technology, some advantage, disadvantage. So the combination of the two, where what is done actually, you have a vacuum based device, you have a uh, semiconductor based device, a semiconductor based amplifier, say gallium arsenide is amplifier, which has been used by MTRDC, developed by SSPL in Delhi. And uh, that amplified output from this semiconductor amplifier is given, provided to the input of a vacuum based device, which is traveling with you, a short section of a traveling with you. And this is it's all within a box. So a, for a user, it is single box. But within that, you have two devices, like microwave tubes and semiconductor devices. So this combination works a lot. So you get the advantages of both the devices. So uh, this has been very successfully uh, tried and now being productionized by MTRDC in Bangalore. Uh, just uh, to show you, uh, uh, to, to, to you all may not be uh, very familiar with the uh, microwave tubes. Uh, uh, this is what you see the a particular device is known as traveling wave tube. Uh, here, what you see the this part is the electron gun. This is the RF structure. It's a helix here, and the collector which collects the electron beam after the inspection process. The input. And you feed the, take the output here. 
and this requires a magnetic field. So the electron gun, okay. this is the known as the uh, microwave, basically within vacuum. So electron gun, electron electron beam is formed of the required current density depending on the you are, what your requirement is there, what cathode you are using. So you get a, 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 a beam which is uh, injected to the RF structure and that goes from input to the output one. But again, what will happen uh, if it is left like that, it will diverge due to the, you know the law, uh, it will diverge. So to focus them, you require a linear magnetic field also. So the moment they have the tendency of going upward, the magnetic field will take care and they will move in a straight line. So electron beam is moved from this to this end. And in the process, when you feed the RF signal, the RF signal gets amplified. The bunching takes place in the electron uh, within, within beam. And that bunched electron beam is that, that is the, the, after this uh, amplification, amplification process is complete, is taken, RF output is taken from this uh, terminal. And then the spent electron beam is passed to the collector. So this is the basically working of a uh, slow, this is a slow wave device where actually you are slowing down the electron beam because uh, the RF has the velocity of the velocity of light. So if it is like that with the different velocity, the condition of the interaction is that both should move at the same velocity. So the what is taken care is the RF structure is made a helix, which is a spiral form. So electron electron beam takes a longer path and your RF is moving the straight line. They take a longer path. So with that, uh, adjusting the diameter and the pitch between pitch within the helix, you can compromise, adjust the velocity of RF and the electron beam and get, meeting that condition, amplification takes place and finally you get the output. So that is the requirement. So that is of any microwave tubes, which is known as slow wave device. The electron beams are basically not actually slowed down, but they are slowed down. And the other, other category, uh, here is the limitations. And in this category, you have klystron, magnetron, backward oscillators, but they have the uh, limitation that at higher frequency, particularly this particular traveling wave, they ca that cannot give you very large power due to the dissipation in the helix itself. But on the other hand, the advantage of these devices, which is traveling with tube, is it's large bandwidth. You get a very large bandwidth. So particularly for defense applications, for jamming applications, wherever you want to make a broadband uh, signal, the, this is the traveling with tube which requires you for wherever jamming is required, whether it is you. These days also, you see the, sometimes this, uh, you are heard, hearing that uh, your I, your phones are jammed due to some disturbances are there you they are they are jammed so that in electronic warfare also this thing happens so this is used for jamming purposes the advantage of a traveling with you is it gives you very large bandwidth but limitation of power is there because it has a fragile structure which cannot take that much power but other like klystron and magnetrons they use very large power and this is another category gr this is known as slow wave device where you are slowing down the electron beam there is the fast wave device where you have a uh, spiral electron beam which is moving in, in the magnetic field, it gyrates in the magnetic field, and the gyrate, directing magnetron beam pass through a, 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 a cavity which takes care of the interaction, and finally you have taken to the um, their signal is collected by the collector, and you have the different uh, um, magnetic focusing coils which are required for focusing them. So this particular uh, device which is known as gyratron is at the advantage it can go to, to very high frequencies you can talk of terahertz gyratron and also they can give you very large power very high power so that's the advantage of uh, gyratron that is the fast wave devices the other two again slow wave devices magnetron on the left hand side and uh, this is a klystron here actually, two cavity klystron and this is a magnetron. Magnetron is the simplest device. You see your microwave oven which you are using in your home, your mother or your sister is using, or you are yourself maybe using microwave oven. It has a, it requires a very low power magnetron, about 700 to one kilowatt. That is almost the power limit and the frequency is fixed. 
two four five zero is the frequency two four five zero megahertz is the frequency where this uh, these megatrons are used for domestic application but for warfare you need very for particularly for radar application you need very high power so there different types of uh, megatrons are used are capable of giving very high power but they are simple simple in design easy to make so clyston gives you much more higher power but it is relatively complex device than magnetron then these are the some of the uh, uh, now the some traveling wave tube which have been developed this was uh, developed by isro isro bangalore this is a c band traveling wave tube it was developed for isro and it was used in their ground stations both at delhi as well as ahmedabad and very successfully operated and this was a uh, bharat electronics supported this project and this was a s band a traveling wave tube and this was a mini traveling wave tube mini traveling wave tube which was for defense applications and this is a clystron which was this was initially started by c s hari pilani but later on this was completed by mtrdc bangalore uh this is the very first uh, traveling wave tube uh, and uh, i have the Uh, privilege of uh, working in this from the very beginning i started working in this particular traveling wave tube this is very simple tube it's just a 2 watt 2 watt and 2 to 4 gigahertz bandwidth and uh, it was total indigenous design indigenous design and everything was in situ in the institute itself except material material of course we are dependent on outside sources but the technology a total design was developed uh it was developed designed and developed at siri and uh um, i'm happy to share with you that uh, professor b n basu was also in the team of this for a very short period but uh, one year only but that one year was very advantages to siri as well as to myself to all that we developed a very strong relation with professor basu and his team and then later on with professor jain also so uh he did lot after that after leaving siri also he started a base for uh, analytical studies in the area of traveling wave tube particularly he did a lot he published lot of publications he has in, uh, you must be aware of that but uh, he was we are privileged to have with us for about a year for working in this particular traveling wave tube and uh, this are the again the uh, this is the very first space qualified traveling wave tube a space qualified traveling wave tube the requirement are different they are very um, very robust in everything in the technology and weight also has to be low i'll not go into detail and uh, this is another uh, carbon tlt space tlt which has been developed and uh, this is recently again a, uh, a uh, it's again 25 db it is 140 watt and efficiency about 60% and uh, lightweight again this is again a ku band tlt which has successfully handed over to Uh, second that was was developed by them developed for them there are the various clystrons which were developed by siri uh, this was the very first the very first is the cw clystron 1 kw for troposcatter applications it was used by and then the technology was taken by bharat electronics and this was a 5 megawatt uh, clystron in s band it was for rr cat indoor and this is a 6 megawatt uh, Clystron for BRC Mumbai. Uh, this is a J-band clystron. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it could not be completed due to some uh, reasons. And but anyhow, the technology was established, and we got a lot of help from MTRDC as well as from BRC for developing this particular magnetron clystron. Sorry. These are again some initiatives under the CSR Natural Program for. they are loving the technology of uh, uh, 352 megahertz uh, and 5 uh, 5 gigahertz clystron 5 gigahertz clystron was the requirement of uh, uh, ipr gandhinagar and this uh, 352 megahertz beam stick tube which was made this particular clystron was the requirement of vrc for their uh, active de active denial system accelerator driven system sorry ads program there are the some couplers where high frequency couplers were made for brc by siri pilani they have been successfully used by them and this is the window 
uh, typical window uh, made by made for IPR Gandhi Nagar. Ultimately, uh, this of course is a eight channel, but it is 64 channel with the help of this technology was given to them and uh, with the help of industry. Now they successfully developed a 64 channel window. These are the Kleist megatrons which have been developed by Siri. Uh, then the cathode activities, I like to push up now, time is... Uh, then we are also working on different uh, gas discharge devices, particularly thyrotrons in different uh, categories. Um, uh, and then uh, these are some, uh, we have been working on the, also working on a uh, plasma based device also we have been working and uh, the bus is also involved. And then the uh, Dr. Neeraj Kumar of Siri has been working on that. Uh, this, uh, now coming to the end, I'll send that take two, three minutes. So this is uh, the project for which main project we have been working is the thermonuclear experimental. This is thermonuclear reactor using gyrotron. This reactor is being established in France. I mean, seven countries are participating in this program and India is one of them. But seven countries means whole European Union are considered as one country only. So these are the countries which are mentioned here. And this is the timeline. Uh, of this uh, particular project so to uh, we are not able to go directly to this so with the support of dst we thought of going to a uh, in between we started working on a 42 gigahertz gyrotron 200 kilowatt power we started with that and we also in parallel with the support of csi we started working on this 120 170 gigahertz gyrotron so but particularly this uh, was a 42 gigahertz gyrotron which was uh, it took long time because it is a multi-institutional project, uh, Siri had the main role, and uh, Samir Mumbai, IPR Gandhinagar was the user as well as the participant in this program, and then BHU Aranasi and IIT Rudki and Samir Mumbai. The other wheel five institutions worked a lot, developed the design, and tried uh, in parallel. We got a lot of support from Dr. Lalit Kumar at that time, and now from then later on from MTRDC also, and some help from RR Cat Indoor, BEL, everyone. Because the technology, it was a, a huge tube. It was the weight of about uh, 170 kg, the weight of this tube. Uh, about length is about more than two meters. So this particular tube, what you see here, it has was developed by uh, Siri Pilani, produced at Siri Pilani, with the support of other organizations, including IPR, who are the user. And uh, then this was dispatched to them. It's being developed. This is being... Uh, mounted in the system in the magnet system which has been developed there uh, this is again the total system uh, this is uh, in the center is the dr kulkarni from ipr myself and dr malhotra he did, he did a lot because there are some problems with the cryo magnet uh, we had a lot of uh, struggle with this particular device due to some problem with this magnet ultimately brc came to our rescue and uh, Dr. Malhotra's group, he was the head of the division, he developed a, a magnet. Of course, it took time, it took uh, about one and a half years. He developed a magnet of the requirement what we had, what we had uh, for the, this particular gyrotron. And we are successfully mounted that. And that was, we got the result from this. And uh, that was a very successful day. And uh, we have a lot of, uh, we are very thankful to BRC as well as particularly Dr. Malhotra for uh, coming to our rescue for uh, developing the magnet as per actually as per a requirement. This is what we got. And this is the, some of the team members from IPR. He's uh, Professor Bora, the earlier director of Dr. 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 Professor Chaturvedi is director, present director. Uh, he is Dr. Kulkarni. Dr. Bora, Dr. Bera is the present, uh, uh, present uh, um, uh, uh, project leader of all the, or leader of the group leader of the, all the activities related to the gyrotron. He is Dr. Sinha, who was the who was the founder, principal investigator of this project. Even from the very beginning, he was there, and he continued for uh, decades also. And the other team members who are there with them, not full team. It's a partially there from IPR and CD Pilani. They are there for the testing of the gyrotron. Uh, this is another I would like to show. Uh, he is our the great man personality, Dr. Amarji Singh. The founder director of Siri Pilani. Uh, as I told you, he retired in 1984 from Siri. And he is the, that time he was the uh, director, Dr. Chandrasekhar. 
Dr. Sena, uh, Dr. Sina, myself, Dr. R.K. Gupta, and this is Dr. Vera. So this is, uh, we are very, I mean, the, the very first gyrotron with which was ready is the lab prototype. It was not exact uh, gyrotron, but the lab prototype, very first prototype, he witnessed that and he congratulated the team. He was very happy because he was he also worked in the area of gyrotron. He was very happy to see that India has developed uh, this particular gyrotron with own, uh, own R&D. So this is the, I wanted to share with you this particular slide. And I'll not go to detail now. These have a collaboration with different uh, agencies in the country and outside the country also. And uh, this is what we have opportunities as a I'll not go into detail. Uh, to conclude, I'd like to say that, particularly the youngsters that now as on today, uh, leave aside this COVID period, forget this COVID period, but we had ample R&D opportunities in the country in different disciplines, leave aside physics, leave aside electronics, in all area, all area of science, you have a lot of uh, opportunities are there. But only thing is, you have to choose a particular stream and you have to excel yourself. That is very essential. You are mediocre, if you are a mediocre, then it will not work. You have to work hard, strive to whatsoever you want. I mean, it is not essential you will go for engineering or medicine or this and that. Whatsoever you feel, you should choose that particular one. I remember my area when I was childhood. Father Pitaji ne kedi abe ye karna hai, to karna hai. Wo kya hamne? ठीक है ना? You will all, you will surprise to know that uh, when I completed my M Tech, I had two options. One at uh, uh, Siri Pilani, and other at IPR Gandhi Nagar. Not IPR, sorry, IPR, Indian Institute of Physical Research. But my father told me, "Bhai, to bahut dur hoga, Ahmedabad." Pilani thoda baad Delhi ke paas hai, he joined there. So I joined that. So that was the area. But now the children are very child are very smart. Their boys are very smart. They know what they have to do. So they have to. That's why I say you have to choose. You know your you know yourself what you are, what you are capable of, what you can do. So you have to strive in that particular area. And opportunity abundance opportunities are there. They are waiting for you. But only thing you have to grab them at a particular time. We have to work hard. That is a very essential thing. You have to work hard. Choose your particular discipline, wherever you have the capability. You may not be having strong in mathematics. You may be having strong in physics. Or you may not be having strong in even physics electronics. There is some, something else. So wherever you are free, feel that you are strong, you have to uh, choose that particular path and go. And uh, naturally, support is there. For a lot of support is there. But of course, another one another thing is there. In R&D, if you want to choose in R&D, naturally, other whatsoever income you have, it will be limited. You may not get that much salary if you go to a private organization, uh, uh, particularly for this, uh, what they call it. Uh, uh, when you do some, some um, not for private agency, no, that word I should not use, uh, not public, but uh, the computer programming job. I, I am not able to recall that particular, uh, what they call it. But that type of work, if you want, they have you have a lot of money for that. But again, you will not have that uh, that uh, happiness of achieving something through R and D. So that is your choice. If you are if you are interested in money, then actually you have to choose the other path. If you are interested in science and technology, R and D is the best, and you have a lot of opportunities. And I express my best wishes to you all. Do your best wherever you are. And uh, it's a privilege for me that I'm talking with you. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge, i like to thank uh, the this in particular engineering college, BCR Engineering College, and Professor Dr. Sarit Pal, Professor Dr. B.N. Basu, and all participants of this funny, funny webinar. Particularly, I'd like to thank Dr. Larit Kumar, who contributed, uh, some. he provided some inputs to me for uh, during this lecture. And thank you, Dr. Larit Kumar. I thank you all who have participated in this program. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. It was an excellent talk. You gave us an insight of the various R&D options that we are having in our country. Uh, you uh, introduced us to the various uh, organizations like CIA, the uh, 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 Steve Webb. Not only the faculty members, the research scholars can also submit their proposals. Uh, to carry out their research work. 
sir, uh, we are happy to see we have more than 100 participants who are listening to, the, to your talk and hearing the benefit from your uh, words, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, for uh, joining us and giving us a, such a nice and beautiful talk on uh, r and You introduce us to the various uh, microwave tubes and the various techniques uh, that uh, generation of microwaves. And uh, thank you, sir, for, for all the, the, such a nice presentation. I also thank Lalit Kumar, sir, uh, for uh, uh, giving us a uh, uh, few insight on the various propos uh, research proposals and various organizations. Now, I'll, now I'd like to um, ask the participants uh, if you have any questions, then we can uh, Yes, sir, definitely. I'll be happy to. Uh, hello. Uh, questions, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Can we take the questions from the participants? Yes, yeah, de definitely, definitely. I'll be happy to do that. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, have... we have the first question coming up from Dr. Vishal Kesri. Okay. Uh, he, he, his question is What is the power level of this band? TWT developed by CSR, TSIS, CERI, Pilani. That is slide number 30, sir. It's a, it's a 125 watt. Okay. It's you, 125 watt, KU bed, 125 watt. It has been handed over to ISRO, a SEC the Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. I am yes, getting sir. questions from experts. I should have questions from. I am. I am afraid. I am afraid to answer. No, I am non-expert. I am asking a question. Yes, sir. Basu, sir. Not question. Comment. Please, 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 please carry on. Carry on. Kamlika. Yes, sir. Kamlika, may I permit me? So now we have with us a great uh, scientist who developed the first ever uh, relativistic backward wave oscillator in our country yes. he is professor k p yes, maheshwari yes. i welcomed him yes i agree with him yes uh, he is one of the greatest scientists of the of the, of the world so he is here so, so i think i don't know whether he can give a comment on uh, sir, 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 I, uh, sir i welcome him sir I'll be happy. I'll be happy. happy to hear a few words from him. He, he. Yeah, yeah. Professor KP Mahesh from DAVB. Indoor. DAVB Indoor. Okay. Professor KP Mahesh, please. Yes, sir. I Prof. saw you in the beginning. Lalit Lal Kumar ji, yes. Thank you. KP Mahesh. Where is KP Mahesh? Yes, he's there. Yes, sir, please. Mic is off, sir. Sir, please continue, sir. So you are most welcome. Yeah, yeah. No, I am very much thankful to Professor Joshi for a very nice talk and very informative to the young ones uh, working in the field of the science, especially the students. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, this seminar should have been open to almost all university students especially they they could know many opportunities many uh, chances to work and uh, which dr joshi summarized in this a uh, small lecture very big information i'm very very happy thank and, you uh, professor thank Basu you is the great uh, philanthropic professor yes who really thinks of good for the students in the country and devotes so i may say it's a very nice experience and uh, he has developed in such tough time a very good job at home and one could listen such beautiful lectures uh, so thank you professor basu uh, your your imagination your your way of doing things i really admire uh, all your efforts and Professor Joshi took all the pains to bring all the information available for the young students. And if they could, uh, so I thought that this should have been open to somehow 
we could uh, bring it to the notice of the students in the universities in the country. They would have really been very much yes, benefited. Thank you, sir. And uh, just for your information, Professor Maheshwari has helped us Siri for running that academic program, this MTech program. He was our faculty for so many years. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> I remember those days. <clears throat> Thank you. Sir, one question. Can you hear me? Yeah, next, uh, next question, please. Yes. Sir. Uh, okay, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, sir, definitely, okay. sir. Please continue. Sir, actually, uh, I'm not directly from this field, microwave and electronics. I'm from, I'm a computer science uh, hello. faculty. So, hello. Ha, garpe, ha. No, no, garpe, ha. Hello. Mm. Please continue. Okay, so actually, uh, I'm a computer science faculty. So, mm -hmm. can you, but I'm interested in this piece because uh, once I was a student of electronics also. So, if anybody from computer science can contribute into that, that field, how to proceed? Because we are working uh -huh. in 5G communication basically on the routing protocol designs and all these things. But how this, what are the scopes of that uh, as a computer science? The computer science has a great role. <laughs> we are very dependent on the programming. Say yes. all this design, all this design we have been using computer design only. So you are the expert. You can definitely contribute. That, that that's what I feel actually. But that is an indirect way you are you are telling. Ah. But direct way how can I contribute? Okay. There's the okay. direct prop. Yes, professor Basu is there. No, yes. no. I request uh, uh, Dr. Lalit Kumar. Yes. He's with us. So uh, could he could he please comment on this? Sure. Dr. Lalit Kumar can do. Oh, sure. Please so, do. I, let me understand who is this person who is asked question. Dr. Somna Shah. Dr. Sina. Dr. Sina. Dr. Sina. Sina. Dr. Sina. 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 Two kind of yeah. opportunities that any computer engineer can do. Number one is that uh, the entire uh, design of the of the microcomputer is done by computer designer Dr. Joshi Tord. So which includes the computational electromagnetic solving the ordinary and partial differential equations and uh, doing meshing algorithms and then a lot of processes. The other way which the computer scientists can do is nowadays the computer aided design require require a lot of big memory and big size arrays to be analyzed. And so there is a need of uh, doing the things in a multi-processor domain so that the programs could not run for weeks together but they could be nine maybe hours so there is a need for doing the parallelizing of the programs and uh, combining all the research the data management archiving so there is also peripheral work which can be done for any institution to do archiving data mining and uh, Basically, uh, keeping the track of the system uh, iterations and other things. But we can discuss in detail. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. I got the idea. The opportunities are there. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. So, I also pay a positive thank you, Dr. Joshi, for a wonderful interaction. Yes, yes. we worked together for so many years. Oh, sure, yes. yes. <laughs> now you are DRDO well, but there you are CSAR well. You cannot forget Siri. Pil or no. Pilani, you cannot forget. <laughs> no, no, I was happy yes. to see some of the tubes I worked while I was Siri when you quote this slide. So, so uh, one thing, uh, yes, Dr. Larry Kumar, uh, he is fellow of National Economy and he is the editor of one of the editors of ITP transactions on electron devices. So uh, I think he, so he can give you uh, a, a particular forum or a particular forum uh, how to how to uh, write papers and get through in ITP transactions on electron devices yeah. and microchips. Yes, yeah, I will definitely be happy to sometime give a talk on uh, how to get complete or how to write a good paper. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.
that will be very good anything any question we have uh, more question uh, sir we have few more questions from dr richard uh, richard's vit chennai his question is gpu computing uh, computing may also be implemented could not get a question uh, sir uh, i was just suggesting that uh, as okay, one you. professor asked as one professor asked that uh, how computer science can contribute right so gpu computing is one other thing that can be implemented so i just suggested it okay graphics first okay. thank you Okay. Sir, we have a lot more questions, but we are getting out of uh, time. Yeah. So, first of all, I like to thank Joshi sir, our expert Joshi sir, uh, Majeshwari sir, Arif Kumar sir, and Basu sir for their expert opinion. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. And I request uh, Professor Chantan Ghosh sir, head R&D cell at the BCI Engineering College, uh, kindly give the vote of thanks. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hello. Yes, audible, audible. Okay. Very good afternoon. Our honorable speaker, an eminent scientist, Dr. S. N. Joshi. Uh, our director, Dr. Pijus Palwai. Our invited guest, students, organizer. Faculty, it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, Dr. C.K. Bhoor, from behalf of R&D School of Dr. Bishirai Engineering College, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our speaker, Dr. Joshi, for sharing with us his opinions and ideas on the R&D opportunities in the country, a case study on microwave fuel. I also thank to Dr. Sorit Pal for taking initiative in organizing this helpful webinar. Thanks to Dr. Kamalika Tewari and Professor Somodip Das, member R&D cell, for their help. I would also like to thank Professor Obhijit Banerjee and Mr. Ghosh for their help in making this the necessary arrangement for online streaming for the event. Special thanks to Professor Dr. Ashton Basu, ex-professor and head of the Department of Electronics Engineering, IIT, BHU, for his continuous support and suggestions to make this event a grand success. We also have with us Dr. Lolit Kumar, a great scientist in the area of microwave device and system and application. Thanks to Dr. KP Maheshwari for joining with us. So this webinar will especially help the students, faculty members, microwave researchers, and industrialists in the future with respect to their career and research. Thanks to the concern to be present virtually in this webinar, even during this pandemic scenario. We look forward to organizing more webinars like this for the interest of the students, faculties, and researchers for their technical investment. Lastly, I would like to wish everybody good health and safety. Thanks again to Dr. Joshi sir for giving your valuable time and enlightening discussion on my web tool. I am also requesting you to find suitable time to visit our institution in future, if it is possible for you. This is our invitation to you, sir. I would love to. I would love to do that. Once this, once this infection goes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. My age, I not like to travel at this stage.
But uh, whenever this COVID goes, definitely I like to be happy to share my views with you and your colleagues, students yes, particularly. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you very much. A number of faculty members in our institution, especially in our department, are working on the topic related to microwave and millimeter wave antennas and arrays. Mm. So your, your insight your insight will help them a lot, myself included. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for this very good discussion. And a lot of Indian scientists were present today. That is an added advantage for us. So I now request uh, Dr. Munika Tiwari to close the session. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have an important announcement for all the participants. Uh, you can see the feedback form. Please fill up the feedback form and we are going to receive your uh, participation certificate. The certificate will be in two days. I thank, uh, thank you all the participants, all the experts and the entire team of the Dr. Pisikai Group of uh, Institution. Uh, sir, I, with, the exp uh, with the permission of the experts, I like to we are closing today. Sir. Komolika, feedback form is available in the chat box. Okay. Okay, sir. Feedback form is available in the chat box. Please fill it up. I shall send it in the WhatsApp group also. Okay. okay. Please, please fill, the, uh, fill the feedback form and the subject will be issued after that. So, once again, thank you for uh, making this lovely evening. I enjoyed interacting with you all. Thank you, sir. Good luck to all of you and my blessings to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.